Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, the online training course with the hits that keep you hopping. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about common physical network topologies. We're going to talk about this concept of physical network topologies as a star, a mesh, a bus, a ring, a point-to-point, -point, a point-to-multipoint, and a hybrid. And that comes to us from that section 2.3 of our Network Plus exam. So there's a lot of different concepts of how networks are laid out, and we're going to go through each one of these and discuss why they're better or worse than other types. Whenever you're planning a new network, you want to think about how it's going to be laid out. Is it going to be a star type network? Is it going to require a different type of connectivity between buildings within a single building? So as you're laying things out, you may be referencing certain types of physical network layouts. And if you want to look at signal flow on a network or troubleshooting a problem with your switched Ethernet connection or with your wide area network connection, it's also extremely helpful to understand what is the physical network layout for this network type that I'm using and then you can apply that to your troubleshooting processes. Well, let's start with talking about a star network. You see star networks almost everywhere, where there is a central device in the network, and almost everything else on the network is connected directly to that central device. You don't have devices connecting to each other. Everything reports back to the central device, and then the central device figures out where the traffic should go from there. You see this very commonly on switched Ethernet networks, where you put your Ethernet switch in the middle, and everybody connects to that Ethernet switch. So this is not only a description of the physical network layout, but also your logical layout as the data itself goes from one device into the middle. The middle device figures out where the traffic should go and sends it on its way. And that's called a star network. A meshed network is used a lot to connect multiple devices that can get back to the same place. You see this a lot when you need to do some type of load balancing or you need some type of redundancy. For instance, if this device needed to talk to this device, it could either talk directly, but what if there was a break right in the middle of that connection? Because this is a meshed network, it could choose to go around that, go to another device, and then finally back down. So having that mesh in place allows us a level of redundancy, and we could even send traffic out both both directions or receive in both directions simultaneously just so we can do some load balancing across that. We see this most often in wide area network connections that span very long distances. We talk about what a primary connection is to a remote site and then what their backup connection might be. Or we'll set up a wide area network connection where we are directly connected to other sites, but we'll also connect those sites to each other, especially if those sites have a need to communicate back and forth. So as you're designing some of your WAN networks, you may think about how should I mesh some of these things together? Let's not just make it a star. Let's add some other capabilities, especially over long distances. Early networks use something called a bus style topology. A bus was essentially you put a coax cable down the center of a room and everybody plugged into that cable. And this could be in the center of a room, it could be an entire building, but there was a single cable that wound around and everybody plugged into that single bus to be able to send traffic back and forth. It was a very simple connection. It allowed you to plug in really anywhere along the link. And it had very, very easy to, to implement in these environments, but it had many problems associated with it. For instance, if you broke the link anywhere along here, along the bus, that meant that the network broke in too. And in some cases, the network wouldn't communicate either direction at all. So one tiny connection in that winding view, especially when it went through an entire building, could create a problem for everybody. So although this was a very simple and low cost way to implement networking, over a very wide scale, it was not able to be implemented very well just because of its ability to be disconnected and have the entire network brought down. A networking type used today has been used in local and wide area networks through the years is something called a ring topology. A token ring is one that is really no longer used in practical senses, but you may still see in some environments they still have a token ring device sitting around that they just can't swap out because the mainframe or the device that they're using that connects to token ring is one that only connects to token ring. So you may end up having a ring connection or ring network in your environment and not even realize it. We still see this type of physical network layout used a lot in metropolitan area networks and wide area networks. And that's because it has built-in 
fault tolerance. You can set up fiber connections between many different nodes on this network. And if something happens right in the middle, you're doing construction on a street and they break that fiber connection between these, you still have a way to keep connection going between all of these because there's still these other connections. You've essentially created a ring that you can send traffic in both directions around. And we see this a lot with sonnet type ring, sonnet connectivity that's used in these metropolitan and wide area networks because it has that fault tolerance built into it. So you've got this ability to span long distances but still have the resiliency should something happen to that network to keep everything up and running and nobody even knows that there was an outage on that link. A point-to-point -point link is very practical. You have one point, you have another point, you connect them. That's sort of how, the way that we had with older WAN type connections. We refer to some old T1 type connections as being a point-to-point -point communication because really you have that device on one end, you have that device on the other end, and that's it. You have one link between them. If that link breaks, then you have broken the link between those devices. If you're connecting buildings together, you see this done this way today. If it's a connection that's between a building, you're right next to each other. You don't have to worry so much about redundancy or somebody coming along and breaking a piece of cable or a piece of fiber. You may just create a point-to-point -point connection between one switch and another, and you're done. An extremely common form of networking today is called point to multipoint. You see this very often, a good example, in 802.11 wireless. So if you're in a coffee shop and you're using the wireless network, that means that you are out here on the end and you're talking back to a wireless access point that then eventually connects back perhaps to the internet. Now, what we mean by this point to multipoint is you have this single point in the middle that's going out to these other devices. But that doesn't necessarily mean that these other devices can talk to each other. For instance, the centralized communication in the middle may not allow communication back and forth between those. And wireless connectivity, as you're probably aware, can be configured to talk to a central access point or to talk to another device, but not both at the same time. So generally, this point to multipoint configuration can allow connection between devices, but that doesn't mean it has to. So keep that in mind. And just remember that point to multipoint, very common, especially in wireless technologies. Hybrid type communications means that we're taking certain parts of one network layout and we're combining it with parts of another network layout to create something that isn't really a bus, it really isn't a ring, it isn't really a point to point, it's really a combination of different things. You may have, for instance, a network that is a ring network and via a point to point connection it's connecting back to a star network. So you're never quite certain exactly what that is, but almost everybody's network is like this. Almost everybody's network is a hybrid, unless it's a very, very small network. You generally look at networks as being different types of network layouts that are all strung together in different ways. This is very common to see. For instance, a, a wide area network, a sonnet ring, is connecting via a connection into your network that is then connecting to everybody through an Ethernet switch. So that's a good example of how you might have one or more different physical topologies to make up the entire network infrastructure that you have. Let's review some of these network layouts and see if we can remember what some of them are like. Our first question is, what kind of physical network topology connects all devices on your network through another central device? It's one of the first ones we looked at. And if you recall, that is a star, where I have a device in the middle, perhaps an Ethernet switch, and it's connecting out and connecting, allowing connectivity to all other devices on the network. Our second question is, what kind of physical network topology is this? Well, that is a different picture. We didn't have that picture before in the rest of the presentation. But if you look at it, you can see that every device is connected to every other device. So if we know that it, that's the methodology that we're using to communicate, that this must be a meshed network. And you can see that that definitely allows us for redundancy, fault tolerance. We can do load balancing. And everybody is connected to everybody else in this particular diagram. Our last question is, what kind of physical network topology is used in 802.11 wireless networks? There's one that we used throughout that 802.11, and that was our point to multipoint type of physical layout in our network. Very common in 802.11. Well, that's our summary of our common physical network topologies. We've gone through our star, our mesh, our bus, our ring, our point to point, our point to multi point, and finally, we discussed hybrid communications. For more Network Plus videos, you can participate in our message boards or send me a message. You can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com.